All right, uh, welcome to the live session. It is uh, June 28th. Um, I'm just gonna go through these in order, the order that uh, I got them. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it's probably best. All right, so uh, Isabella, uh, yours first. Um, yeah, you made a lot of progress on this. Uh, this is where you were last week. And this is, these are your uh, changes. And it's quite a bit better. Um, yeah, I like all the uh, the spec kits you're getting, the you know the, the the light up here, and the sense of sky. It's it's you know it's helping all over the place. Um, yeah, I think I think this is just much better. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the curtain here, and it, maybe it looks like it's reflecting <laughs> an area light or something that feels a little odd. And this is very saturated, so. Um, you could just knock that down in comp, maybe. That might be the best way. I'm not really sure what it's reflecting, but it just it feels funky. I think the, the one thing, maybe, is that some of these spec kits, they, they're they very uh, colored, and, you know, that, that makes them feel a little off. Like, if it's a, you know, non-metallic surface, the spec kit should basically be you know, kind of white or whitish, because it's either reflecting, you know, the strong source or the sky or something. Um, so these feel a little off. Uh, I mean, I like where they are, and I generally like the intensity. But yeah, like even these, probably not so yellow, maybe a little bit bluer for those. Um, yeah, but that's like like what's happening on the on the uh, street. Um, this side of frame, I mean, I think it's better. It's 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 brighter. Maybe this. I mean, actually, this is the kind of spec that I would expect to see a little bit more. However, uh, maybe it's a little bright because I don't know kind of where it's coming from. It does kind of feel like you have a spec light over here just just for this. So I, I kind of knocked that down a little bit. And then you know, some of these areas are still really dark, like the inside of this plant. Like maybe if you just lift that a little bit. Um, and, and the one other thing is like, I, because we, you've opened this up so much and, you know, I have a nice bloom and everything, I, I'd still kind of expect to see, you know, a, a bit of a sense of the, the sky, um, specular sense of the sky on some of this stuff, like these, oops, these tiles, you know, for instance. You know, I, I feel spec from the sun, but not so much from the sky. And I think there'd still be that, especially in here, because this because this is so dark, you know, a little bit more of that, just a bit, you know, gives it a little bit of shape uh, without, and, and still allows you to keep it um, as dark as you want it. You know, clearly you want this to be a foreground thing that's, it's darker and that that works pretty well. You know, you could clean this up a little bit too. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be kind of everywhere. You might even see it on the top of this. Yeah, maybe not, but. But uh, yeah, much improved. So um, I, I think you could move on to the next one. All right, great. Um, Caro. Okay, a lot of improvement here too. Uh, let's see. This is the kind of your first frame from last time. And oops. Oh wait, no, sorry. This is this is what you had last time. That's what you have now. That's that's much better. Um, you know, I see that you've got some fill in here, as you said. Um, the, the lighting on the character is better. I think it, we can still work on that. No, I did a paint over so I can show you. But overall, yeah, like the, the value in the room is, is much better. Like there's a little bit of light in there. It's not too much. Um, but, you know, it, you, you've gotten rid of the, all the, the, well, most of the blacks. You know, there, there's a little bit of blue pushed in there and that helps. Um, you know, as I was thinking about this, since it's so dark, you know, and you're playing the, the neon up so much, e even though the like the neon lights don't really have direct line of sight into this, in, in, into this side of the room, there'd be some, 
because it's dark, there'd be so much sort of red pink light coming into the room that it would still bounce around in there. So I think that actually gives you an opportunity to fill some of the darks, the shadows, not only with the blue, that's kind of the ambient for the entire room, but sort of um, um, more accenty stuff from, from the red light. And you could, you could kind of throw that around um, and pepper it in, I, I think a little bit as you want to, you know, because we don't really know what the shape of the room is and how it's bouncing around. But um, when I started painting it in, it definitely helped the feel. All right, so that, that's the room. Um, as far as the character goes, like I, where he is, I mean, there, there's a couple things, right? Um, sorry, here's, here's the last frame. This is where you are. Um, so there's, there's kind of two zones here, and right? we talked about that, the, the beginning and the end. And you really, I think you wanna start this a little bit darker so that the end where he's looking at the, the, the um, murder board and, and uh, stepping back from it has more um, significance than the beginning, you know, just value wise, you know, when it's brighter, it just feels like it's important. So, um, and you know, you, you're, it is a kind of a tough situation lighting wise over by this board because, you know, it, it's very top lit. So it's good. things are gonna to tend to be a little bit darker. So I, I think you, you should come down on him quite a bit, especially, you know, since he's wearing a white shirt and his arm is getting really pretty hot. Um, and even the side of his face, like you're seeing it pretty clearly. I, I think you could go into the shadows a little bit more. That said, this side, the screen right side, maybe it's getting a little congested in there. It's a little dark. So this is kind of what I was thinking. All right, let the sleeve, the screen left sleeve go a lot darker. Oh, also like the cigarette always lit, make it really bright. Um, actually extra bright when he takes a drag off of it later. I think he does, as I recall. But anyway, so, um, you know, the, 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 the side that's away from the window, I think, you know, you can make him feel darker overall and just sort of even him out a little bit. You know, there, there's a probably too strong sense of a key here that is off screen and you don't really, it, it's, I don't think it's really contributing to the composition or what you're trying to accomplish here. So I think you can oops, just um, back off that and sort of light him a little bit more um, ambiently and somewhat darker and more neutral um, where he has kicks and rims, but uh, not so much like a, a second key. I don't think you need it. And so I did, you know, also pump up um, the contribution from the, from the neon, from the red window all around, like you know, rim, rimming in more with it. but also just letting it bounce into the room more, like it's hitting the sides of the, the picture frames. You know, a little bit on the side of this, even on the floor, just a, a subtle amount of that, that warm color adds, adds to the, the whole thing. You know, it kind of brings this together with this. Oops. And, you know, uh, in one of the next paint overs, I actually sort of filled in some of these really dark and kind of overly black shadows with a little bit of red. Uh, that that was surprisingly helpful. All right, so let's move on to the second. Um, this is where you were uh, last week, or not last week is a while ago, um, and these are your improvements. And I think you know this, this is a big big improvement for sure. Okay, so the board is getting illuminated better. You got the the ambient blue around. Um, it's kind of the same thing with with his arm. Like right now, I, I look at his arm more than anything else, or his sleeve anyway, more than his face. Like his eyes feel a little bit artificially brightened, um, but you know, kind of losing the silhouette of his hat. I mean, I know it'll be moving, so that'll help. But um, even his face, it's. It, you know, it's fine that there's key coming from this thing now because we, you know, we know that that's going to be important. 
but it's just a little too dark here. I know he's going to be moving through it and maybe, maybe it'll be okay. But um, what I would suggest is, you know, just filling that a little bit more. So you, you get his whole face really not, not quite as, this is, this is a little too um, directed to the, the right side, I think. So I, I darken the sleeve up a lot. So you feel the rim more. Um, same thing with his, his arm too. Actually, you know, his whole, I have been out what they do. Sorry, that's the old thing. Right, so cigarette lit. Um, actually, kind of, um, I didn't brighten the key side, but allowed more speck to come through. So there's more speck on his forehead, you know, on the bridge of his nose, a little bit on the top of his mustache, inside his beard and stuff. Because he, he does feel a little diff diffusely flat, like he needs more specularity. All right, so this side of his hat is getting kicked with, you know, something like the color from from that overhead light. You know, when I look at this, the overhead light might be a little bit too warm too. Uh, I, know, I know it's probably incandescent, but it, it feels a little maybe too yellow. Okay, so I didn't fill those shadows in this one. I guess it's actually I'm missing something here. Well, I know what happened. Hang on, sorry. Uh, Right, okay, so um, so look at the background, the, the, the picture frames, the wall next to the window, this, uh, the book, uh, I guess it's a file cabinet with the binders on it, and then even in the shadows here, underneath the post-its or whatever, not the post-its, but the, the uh, papers. That it's just a little bit, but you know, having really black shadows, it's it's really distracting. It feels very fake and CG, and it seems like filling it with red actually helps. And a little bit of um, highlight, just mystery red highlight on the on the glass of one of these picture, or both of these picture frames, two of them, three of them, actually all three of them. Um, again, just those little hints tie tie the sides together a little bit better. And you know, dings, eye dings, always. All right, um, and then the last one. Let's see. This is where you were. You know, I mean, uh, compositionally, it makes sense. It's like he's he's near, near the, the board. Um, you know, he's under a key. You do have a fake fill here that's that just doesn't feel real because the there should be some kind of shadowing from his hat. Um, and you know, this, this, it overall is much better for sure. However, now you're running into that legitimate problem of, all right, so the brim of his hat is casting a shadow on his face. You, you're kind of getting around it a little bit, but, um, I think maybe actually that might've forced you to, to make that key a little too bright because he's, he's really kind of burning out here. Like even even this area feels more like it's his diffuse that's starting to blow out. And I guess you can see a specular hit there. So maybe it's not. Um, the shirt is definitely really, really hot. It's really, really hot. And also the backside is really dark. So it's like practically black and it has, has the red rim that feels a little disconnected from everything. Cause I don't like, there's nothing on his back, you know or the back of his head or anything. It, it just, it feels almost like an underlight Actually, probably is because it's on the other arm as well, and it's very strong. Like it feels like it. That's way too strong for how far away he is. I mean, I think it's good that it's there, but I think you need to move it a little bit and reduce it. So, this is kind of what I was suggesting. So, bring that way down, even out his sleeve. You know, it, it, 
Yeah, like the darkest darks are lifted and the brightest brights uh, come down. And then uh, kicking from the, the window and that window spilling all over the place, just like it was in the other ones, including on, in the shadows. Um, also on the back of his head, side of his hat, uh, the, the rim of the brim. And then from, from your key light, from the, from the board light, um, more specular um, on the hat from that uh, and on his arm and stuff as well. And, and the, the big thing here though, is that you gotta find a way to, to uh, fill his face because that really is the most important thing is like his expression as he's looking into this without it feeling phony, you know, like you can't feel whoops, like this because there's, there's just no shadow there. And, and it's a little, it's too strong and it doesn't feel, feel like it's coming from there or bouncing up from there or bouncing off the board or anything. I mean, I, you, you can get away with a decent amount, but when it's, when it's this strong, uh, it, it starts to, you know, give itself away. So I think the only way to do this, because because of his hat, is really to just is bring a light closer in, um, that will sort of affect this whole area, hopefully. And as he moves in and out of it, you know, you'll have to see what it does. But you want him at about this level, you know. Unfortunately, his arm is still a little bit bright, actually, because his you know his face and maybe his hand and the and the magnifying glass should be, you know the if not the brightest thing, the, the, the most, the thing that your eye gets drawn to the most, which doesn't really happen in this because you're looking at his sleeve too much and his, and his face is kind of disappearing. All right, um, but uh, I mean, it's a lot of progress. It's, uh, it's looking good, I think uh, there's, you know, a couple things you can do, like in general, clean up his eyes, get that ding in there, make sure you can see a little bit of color in the iris, um, light that cigarette up, it should be really bright. And, you know, if you can animate it, uh, either in comp or with light on it, um, that'll, that'll be pretty cool, you know, especially right here when he's taking a drag on it. You know, it's possible that this, this whole area is dark enough that if you tie the, um, a light to the end of that cigarette, you might, you know, catch a little bit of color or, or spec from it, from that source, because it is a very bright source, even though it's very small. All right, cool. Uh, so Angela, hey, how are you? So I see you're doing the, the, uh, the Bean thing. Yeah, I started the character lighting course and I chose Mr. Bean okay. to light him up. Yeah. So I'm using Random Man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you mostly have it. You know, I think the 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 reference um, Leonardo is a little bit more underlit than you have, and maybe a little contrast here too. Like, do you? It looks like you have a light from below as well. Do you have an underlight on it? No. Uh, so it's coming from the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, when, when I look at this, what, what I think is happening here is um, there's probably three main lights. I mean, there's the ambient light in the room, right? Uh, which mm -hmm. sort of feels blue, like it's coming through that. And, you know, the deepest shadows are not black. There's still color in them. So there's a, you know, a little bit of blue in here. Like you can see it making the, the curtains purple. And you know it's probably in his face too. You just it's a little harder to see there. But okay, so there's there's a there's a kick on this side, which is um, pretty much on the side, maybe slightly above. That's mm -hmm. doing at least this very strong thing here. And then either there's a, a separate hair light from above, or there's another rim. You know, a kick on this side, which is a little bit broader, and a rim on this side, which is more right behind him and, and high. That's making, I think it's actually those two lights that's that's making this happen in his hair 
um, you know, sort of uh, lighting up the fuzz on his ears and his face, and then probably getting his shoulders, both shoulders. So, you know, this shoulder is a combination of the side light and the top light. And then the, the sort of big motivating one um, emotionally is this under light. So it's, it's not, I don't think it's a bounce from these other lights. I think it's specifically placed because it looks pretty low, you know, um, like when you look at his, his, um, his, uh, his eyebrows, I mean, his eye um, area, like that's, that's lit, right? And the, like the underside of his nose is lit, underside of his lip. Um, and, you know, the underside of his, of his uh, eyelid and these eye bags and stuff, like his cheek is kind of lit for, like this. So, Yours, I think, is, you know, as you said, it's pretty much coming from here. Um, I think you can go further with the underlining, something like this. Like mimic that other light and have it really kind of be, you know, not straight up, but, but much more um, dramatically uh, underlit. So that the like the undersides of his of his brow and lids, and especially like like look at look at uh, Leonardo's. Oops. You know the, the underside of his nose, and the underside of his eyebrow. Oops, sorry. So that's that's kind of, you know, and this furrowed brow, it's all you know underlit. So that that's that really you know tells you where the light's coming from. So give that a shot. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay, Pitbull. Uh, this was last week. This week. Um, yeah, I think the the table leg is much better. Um, I see you added blue. I think you know this, this. This is starting to feel a little desaturated and washed out now over here. Um, I'm not sure if you have a lot of haze back there, or or if it's uh, or what's causing that. I mean, I guess there's a little bit of it here too. Maybe when you shifted it, it just feels foggier. Um, yeah, I don't think you want that really. Uh, I think you know this. This background can. Uh, sorry, the cabinet can probably get a little bit darker. And, um, you know, maybe a little warmer, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, he feels foggy, the dog. I mean, I think the bowl color is much better. That definitely helps. Um, the, the speck on the dog food, does make it feel like chocolate. Um, maybe you should break that speck up more with some um, high frequency noise so it feels more meaty, I guess. Maybe the color too, maybe throw a little bit of uh, red noise in there or something. Okay. Um, as far as the lizard goes, um, I, well, I mean, he was, oh, Carl, shoot. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see why you were making him blue. Er, um, I, I, I think if you're gonna go green, you can go, you know, more lime green than this. This is kind of in between. And I mean, it is a cartoon lizard after all. So like having it lighter and spe more spec uh, saturated, I don't think would be a bad thing. Um, as far as the ball goes, uh, I think either it needs to be a, a red rubber ball without a seam on it or 
a, a, a yellow tennis ball with a seam on it. I think it'll work either way and it's really up to you. But right now uh, it just seems weird that it's a red tennis ball. Um, and as far as the, the gobo thing goes, I, I, I barely feel it. I mean, I, I can tell that there's a little bit of, of shaping on him, but I, I think you can go a lot further with that. Like I still feel a fill light on him. Um, and I, I would try to almost get rid of that fill and really shoot a strong gobo on, onto him and this whole area and, and even the ground here. Something for him to travel through at the beginning of this shot. So he looks like he's really creeping up on this. Um, and then um, have the key be pretty strong through there. Like, you know, it, it's, it's not that he's entirely in a dark area. It's that um, the gobo parts, let's, let's say it's, you know, gobo caused by a house plant or something has... It's, you know, it's casting shadow, but there are gaps in it where the, the full strength of the sunlight coming in the windows is coming through and hitting him, you know, where you want him to be hit, which is kind of the face and somewhere around the ball, I think. So, I mean, I, I did something more like this. This is a little bit cleaner than last time, but, and I also um, just made him a lot more saturated green. Uh, I don't know if you want to do that. That's a, it's totally up to you, but. I mean, uh, it got a little nasty down here because I didn't fix it completely. But, but um, I mean, I think you can make this color, this kind of color, work because it's it's different enough from any of the yellows and oranges that you know they don't they don't get confused at all. Okay, um, but yeah, uh, mostly the fogginess. I, I try to cure that a little bit, and I, I look forward to seeing. Uh, the other frames, or if you can render the whole thing out, that'd be great. So Raghavendra, this is this is this week, I think. No, this is last week, and then you change it a little bit. No, is this right? Sorry. I feel like I'm missing something here. No, I guess that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think you took a stab at the notes. I, I think you could go further with most of them. I mean, she still feels a little bright to me. I see that you brought her down a little bit, um, but I, she like this color doesn't feel natural, you know. This this feels like diffuse blowing out or or something like it's it's very warm, very orange, uh, and just bright. So I think you know her skin tone could get darker, and, and even her you know shirt still feels a little flashed to me. Um, but you know when you when you brought it down, this area is starting to get a little bit dark again. So like she's starting to get five o'clock shadow. Uh, which is not very appealing. So, I mean, yes, this wall looks better. You know, I feel like I'm missing something here though. Something's wrong. I could have sworn you brought this down even more than this. Maybe I'm, well, all right. Um, I mean, look, hey. Uh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm looking uh, um the new version, the wall is uh, more blue. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I don't know what version is that one. Yeah. All right, I'm not quite sure what I did here. I, I kind of lost. <laughs> lost. You want me to send you? Uh, no, I can, I can pull it probably out. Probably or something. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's come back to this. Um, Carl, we, we, I went through yours. <laughs> Unfortunately, you weren't here yet. Um, let me just go through it really quickly for you, all right? Okay. So, um, so 
Well, I mean, it'll, it'll be in the recording. So let me just uh, do a quick. Um, this is uh, this is what you have. And in, in general, my comments were like, I, I think, you know, some of the, the bright areas are are too hot. And then some of the dark areas are, are still a little bit too dark. But overall, it's much, much better. All right. And I think one thing that you can look into is um, allowing the 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 red light from the neon to feel like it's even if it's not directly hitting stuff because of the angle, feel like it's coming into the room so much that it's bouncing around because it's so dark, it would just start to fill in the shadows and things. So um, in this case, you know, I'm having it uh, rim him more. Um, I, I, I brought down the, the, the sleeve quite a bit and sort of evened out his face. So it doesn't feel quite as, as uh, keyed. For oh, OK. A better word. I decreased the intensity, but uh, OK, I can do it a, little, a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I think it helps because, you know, you're just you're looking at his sleeve too much. And also, in general, I think you want this pose to be to not feel as bright as where you're going, you know, like if the only key on the room will be uh, the one of the of the from of the, the wall. Yeah, maybe okay, yeah. I mean, there could be something over here, but just like not not as bright, you know, not okay. as hot as you have it. Because it's it. a little distracting, but you know we we need to see his whole whole face relatively well without it feeling like there's a strong key. So, okay, you know, so and I still parts. need to um, increase the fill light, right, on the right side of it. Yeah, of his a face. little bit, or or maybe it's just like overall, maybe you need a, little, a tiny bit more fill everywhere. You know, just, okay. just kind of from camera that might help. Um, but if not, then yeah, pick up his right side a little bit because it, it gets a little dark. Or, or you know, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this could be specular as well, possibly, you know, if that works. All right, so this one, um, you know, same thing. If you If you let some of the color come in, you know, hitting the sides of the, of, of the, picture frames and the cabinet and, and you know all over and even getting into the shadows of these notes. Right? Okay. It, it helps tie the two sides together. So, all right, so that's the background. And as far as him, same thing with the sleeve, like because it's a white sleeve, it, I mean, no part of it should ever go black, um, but then you don't want it too bright. So just if you if you bring the whole thing down, I mean, you don't want it to be gray because that's kind of ugly. It should have a little bit of color in it. But but um, you know, it's his face that should read the most. Okay. So in this case, I mean, you're close. I think just get a little bit more fill in there, and you know, a little bit of spec from the light there helps give you another color as well. Okay. <laughs> I was do I, I I did everything you you just saying now and mm -hmm. I thought it, it was uh like too far so I go back. Okay. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, well, that's good. Then you're at least you knew what you were doing. Um, and then the cigarette, you know, make it really bright. Um, because later when he takes a drag off of it, that's that's gonna be really cool when you animate that. So here. Yeah, I should do that in comp, right? Yeah. yeah, I guess so. I mean, that, that's the easiest way to do it. If if this is bright enough in a dark environment to actually give a little bit of glow and uh, you know have specular hits on things, that might okay. be really interesting. So it's probably worth trying it with a light, but you know, it might be too much. And certainly it'll be a lot harder than just doing it in comp. <laughs> Okay, so um, this one, all right, same thing with the background. I'm gonna show it with, with more red in it. Um, and you know, kind of the same thing here, like the, the back of the sleeve is black. The front of it is, is really blown out. Like this is 
it, my eye goes straight to this. Like I can hardly see anything else uh, except for this, this uh, rim light, which, which feels pretty forced. It doesn't feel very natural. <laughs> I, I mean, it yes. kind of feels like this. <laughs> I it's know, pretty yes. fake, right? I mean, I can tell. <laughs> It, it looks like it's coming from below. It's hitting both arms from below, but it's really not getting on his back at all. Like if this were coming more from the window, you'd expect it on his hat too, right? Yes, I think I, think I need to break the rim light, one for the, sh uh, the shirt and uh, one for the rest. Okay. Because yes, I noticed that too, but um, I can get the rim light uh, hitting the suit and the shirt with the same intensity. Yeah, well, I think it's because, you know, I mean, the material, this is very dark um, and hmm. look like it has a lot of speck on it either. And this, this one is just white. So um, it's, gonna, it's gonna suck all the color up, especially if it's black back here. <laughs> yeah. you know, if there's no light back here, then whatever light you hit with it, it's just gonna, it's gonna go crazy, which is what's happening here. So, you know, I brought, brought it down quite a bit, but the same thing where the darks come up and the lights go down. So it, you know, it's, okay. it's more even and less bright overall. And then, you know, sort of kick, kick his back with some red, uh, red picking up on the rim of his brim and on, on the back. Um, but the main thing is you gotta cheat some light in there. I, I know that, you know, when, when you first started this, um, you know, you had this, uh, which, you know, it's, it's the right impulse. It's the right idea, but this isn't working because, you know, it just, it feels too fake. Like there's a light in here that, or there's a light <laughs> coming that's ignoring his hat or something. There's no shadow. And it's just, it's very, very bright. It's like, it's too bright, but I think I'm sure there's a way, um, it won't be easy, but there's a way to sneak, you know, a little bit of fill light in here. Um, slightly from above. So, you know, it does get a little bit of shadow from his hat, uh, but, you know, more, more, not exactly from camera, but from kind of right of camera, but not nearly as high up as, as the, the, the key light is. And then overall, just kind of bring everything down a little bit and try to get his, even though his face is, you know, underneath the shadow of that hat, to, it still needs to be the most important thing. It's like this area, face, hand, magnifying glass, right? And what he's looking at. This actually, maybe this needs to be a little bit brighter too or prominent somehow so you see it. Like just uh, let the, the lines on the map come out more, like make them brighter or something. Um, but yeah. Okay. Oops. All right, so I will post those for you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, you know, Raghavendra, I, I'm going to do a, a separate one for you later because I somehow I must have deleted your latest thing. And uh, I know it's more different than this, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it separately there. All right, Alex. Hello. Um, I had also sent a more updated version of this. Yeah, this is what you had, uh, I guess, yesterday or the day before. And yes, yeah. the, the newer version. OK, um, you want to talk about your reference a little bit? Uh, yes, um, I know we, we've been talking about that a bit. I actually just um, put together a better reference um, because I feel like um, maybe my message was getting lost a little bit um, with what I was aiming for and what I'm kind of trying to create. Mm -hmm. um, so is it okay if I just share that with you on Discord or how do you yeah. prefer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I removed a majority of like the other things that were kind of just there. Um, and I focused in on the pieces that I'm really trying to aim for a bit more. Okay. Lovely, the file is too powerful. Um, let me see if I can drop it here in Discord because it's it says the file is too powerful for the regular one. I apologize for taking up this time. That's right. 
You know, I'm going to pause the recording for a second while you do that and try to get Raghavendra's thing up here. So. Okay, sounds good. And it just. Okay, Raghavendra, I got your latest. Sorry about that. Somehow I lost track of it. All right, let's see. So this is where you were last week. And that's now. Right, yeah, that's definitely, that's what I remember. Okay, so I mean, I, this wall's better, I think, and you know, the, uh, the rim light is, is, is better. Um, maybe you could leave a little bit more of it. <laughs> but, um, all right, it's all right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, and I guess that's okay. That's, that's about right. Um, the rim on her, um, the kick, could, I mean, it could come up a little bit more. Uh, and her skin color, uh, yeah, I still feel like it's a little bit, you know, orange and bright there, but that's okay. Um, this stuff is bluer, that's better. This in the very corner is still feeling really dark to me. Um, I think you need a little bit more color in there. And, the, and then kind of the ground too, it still feels more or less the same. Like uh, it, this area should be a little cooler than the, up, up front. But, um, you know, I mean, overall, I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, although uh, same comments I was starting to make. When, when you brought everything down, I think this area got a little bit too dark again. She does feel like she's got a five o'clock shadow and then right around the eye, especially uh, a little too dark. But that's it. Otherwise, I think you're, you're in good shape. All right, uh, Alex. So uh, there's no way for me to share. <laughs> No worries. That. So, um, actually, I, maybe, I wonder if I can here. Yeah, no, I can't. All right. There's, um, there's no way for you to open the file in Photoshop. Well, I'm on two different computers and I downloaded it on the other one. And okay, so that makes sense. And he asked, it. Oh, actually, let me get the chat. Maybe I here. I completely understand if you can't open that one. Currently. No, I think I got it. If I can find it. the wrong thing to do. Let's try that. All right, here we go. Okay. So tell me about your reference, the, the parts that you do want to keep then. Um, yeah, so I was trying to get that. Um, so the, the problem that I'm, I'm having right now is I can't find any exact reference of what I'm aiming for because what I'm aiming for is something between um, life and um, what's seen in like, I guess, animated movies. Um, I didn't want to make it too oversaturated, kind of like um, the chef is. 
uh, versus, um, you know, the guy with the gun in the restaurant or even um, Gus, um, who's the, the guy from Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I, uh, again, I apologize if I came off uh, rude or any of anything like that yesterday. I was um, uh, a little bit uh, thrown off by the lighting, but as I took a second look, I, re- I started to realize that um, the outside is exposed in most of this reference. Um, uh, but where it becomes a little bit more complex is where I'm trying to have the contrast levels of that indoor scene while keeping some of that, you know, warm lighting and uh, overexposedness uh, from the outside. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they're, they're two pretty different ideas. Mm-hmm. And like the, the problem is like everybody knows this kind of space, right? It's a, it's a subway or whatever. And mm-hmm. they, they tend to be very uh, evenly lit inside, mm-hmm. you know, like if, if, if there's, a window to the outside, then, you know, maybe you're going to get some strong sun inside from there. But otherwise, it's kind of an overhead fluorescent grid, mm-hmm. which tends to just make everything kind of, you know, even and flat, almost like uh, washed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like uh, local news lighting. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you just want everything to be evenly lit. Mm-hmm. And your guy seems to be, you know, um, strongly key and rim lit. Like I, I can't even really tell wh- which side the key is supposed to be on. Cause like here, there seems to be a key coming in the window, right? Maybe from, from this side, more or less come in this way, mm-hmm. but it, it, the opposite side is actually brighter. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's confusing. And, and, there's no, there are no practical lights visible or kind of even really, you know, routinely imaginable. Like in, in a in a situation like this, if you're in a McDonald's counter or something, you, everybody kind of knows what that feels like. Right? Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be, um, you know, like what's what's in in the reference that that uh, top shot from falling down really, more like that. Um, Gus is not behind the counter he's at tables in both of these mm-hmm. so you know he's getting the at least in in you know, in this shot he's getting the benefit of you know the, that strong window light which you are implying in your other one but otherwise you know look at him he's pretty he's pretty even right he mm-hmm. has he has nice modeling because there are you know subtle specular sources that are you know he's reflecting a little bit and it, it's it's you know giving his face shape it's not like everything just goes dark because he's you know in a in an ambient situation so, um this one's a little harder to tell maybe he's right underneath the fluorescent so he's getting it there um, mm-hmm. so there's a little bit more sense of key here like on the on the cup and on the salt shakers and stuff um, but this is pretty even. This is really very even, right? Um, even more so the, the other um, shot that we don't have here. Uh, it's it's mostly, you know, this this is almost doesn't feel like it was lit for a movie. It feels like they just went in and shot it, mm-hmm. which uh, I, I don't know about that. But um, you know, there's there's a decent sense of top light from all this fluorescent stuff. Um, and some subtle specular on him, but overall it's it's pretty flat. And then when you get into Ratatouille, it's kind of the opposite. Like, you know, we we do see the the overhead uh, uh, fixtures in the kitchen. And you don't see them so much in this shot, just that one. But uh, in general, you do. There's there's one over each station, so that kind of justifies that that strong incandescent top lighting. And you know depending on where he is in the space, um, you know, whether it's getting him on the left or the right, uh, but, but more, more of a sense of key, or at least multiple keys. Um, 
I mean, you could kind of make that case that that's happening, you know, oops, here, but it probably would be over the counter and he doesn't feel like he's being lit from over the counter. He feels like he's being lit extreme from the side, almost, you know, behind him and then way from the side, even brighter from over here. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't really add up. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of important. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to make sure that his face is lit so you can see stuff, but the, there, there needs to be a logic to it. And mm -hmm. it, this, this feels like you're just throwing lights in to get his, get him to show up, which mm -hmm. is not the same as, you know, sort of responding to the environment and making it feel like what, what should be happening in the environment. Um, compositionally, I think, there's a lot of distracting stuff here, like uh, this, this, this thing out here, which actually it seems like maybe this is an interior because there's a there's a panic bar on this what seems to be a door here. I, mm -hmm. When I was looking at it more carefully, did you change what what happens be uh, on the opposite side of this class? Uh, no, I I just exposed it a little bit, uh, like you had said, um, mm -hmm. but I had. Uh... Yeah, I just had it exposed. Okay, so that's different. Yeah, because when I looked at like his frames, this 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 pattern just seemed to continue all the way through, and it made it definitely made it feel like it's in the interior of a mall rather than out in a parking lot or something. Which is because I mean this this feels like a tree or something. Yeah, it is. It is a tree. Um, yes, and his, he just had uh, a flat gray color. Uh, okay, so you added that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're making it feel like it's exterior. Yes. Okay. Um, in that case, I mean, I really still feel like you should expo overexpose this more. Um, if nothing else, I mean, not not nearly as much as I did. You don't have to go that far. Mm -hmm. But um, you got to neutralize this. This is like it's practically all I can see. Mm -hmm. Is this? It's comp it's really getting in the way of, of, of reading him. Um, and also, I mean, the interior as well, like this, this, the floor is very bright, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you need to, you need to diminish the, the read of the interior so that he reads better, which is what you're going for by, you know, keying him and rimming him. Um, mm -hmm. And I think all of those things are really working against that. Okay. Now, I mean, a, I think you should experiment a little bit, Brett. I mean, having strong keys and, and strong directionality is, you know, it, certainly it's a way to go all the time, but actually like the more sophisticated lighting approach is to try to do something like this, mm -hmm. where he's actually just more ambiently filled uh, with with uh, you know one side that's strong that's a rim or something and you know a subtle rim on the other side like, there is a subtle rim there. Let me see if I can go in on this a little bit. Yeah, see it there, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But overall, he's pretty even, right? And that's not just because there's a there's a light from camera. Um, there, I mean, there is, you know, a reasonable amount of fill, but then there's a lot of subtle things happening, like there are probably our, our bounce cards, you know, that he's, his skin is reflecting, mm -hmm. um, and his shirt, stuff like that, that, um, that do make him feel like he's in this kind of environment. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, you know, you know, obviously you don't have to do that, but, uh, it might be an interesting experiment for you. Okay. You know, it's, it's something that we were kind of getting at a little bit in Caro's stuff as well. Like, I mean, there's still a strong sense of key, but, but overall more, more flatter mm -hmm. and subtle. Because, you know, as a beginner, the, the, the key light is something that everyone just gravitates towards. It's probably the first light you put in. If you ask me, it's the last light you should put in. And 
the key is often your enemy, not your friend, mm -hmm. because it's so overpowering that it it um, it, it just takes over. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have your ambient situation sort of set up well, what as if you know the sun had passed or, or the, the clouds had passed in front of the sun, or somebody had switched off the main lamp in a room, or whatever your key is, it's not like things are just going to go black, right? There's still light in there, always, you know, in a in a realistic situation. Um, and if you can make something feel fairly natural that way with subtle uh, modulation, then when you add the key, first of all, it won't be nearly as strong because you're not gonna start, start your shot by blasting something with the key and then having space that you have to fill that otherwise would be just black and untouched by rays. Um, it, um, it's, it, it, almost always gives you a better result. Mm. But your call, obviously. The one part that I was struggling with uh, a little bit was that there is a light directly in front of him in mine, um, in my scene specifically. So, uh, I don't know if it's just not showing up properly or maybe my exposure on it is a little bit too low. Um, and then my two comments were, um, is that he turns in this scene. So I was trying to make sure that it's like properly lit um, for that as well. So um, yeah, I just have to figure out a way to make it work so that it, it feels like it's being lit, you know, how you said properly from the top mm -hmm. and that it, it's also, um, you know, feels like it's in the scene. Yes, I'm trying to make it believable, um, but it is uh, an animation. So trying to make the lighting um, as realistic as possible is a bit of a struggle for me right now. Um, and that, like I had said yesterday as well, I feel like I do need to have some uh, more growth in the lighting realm. Um, so um, that's that's another factor that I'm gonna say that I need to work on. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, like these areas, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Like, like his his certain parts of him are are burning out. You know, mm -hmm. those are it's actually really bright to mm -hmm. to get his skin to. I mean, your skin, human skin, would never mm -hmm. get this bright, right? Mm -hmm. um, specular, yes, like they could you know reflect, but then it wouldn't be you know, yellow, it would be mm -hmm. more whitish, you know, more mm -hmm. like what's going on here. So, I mean, overall, like his skin feels, if anything, too bright. And also it's, it's, it's very monochrome in here. Mm -hmm. Like all the lights feel like they're either neutral or warm. Is there any you know, like blue bouncing in from from outdoors. Because if if you're playing this, like it's outside. yeah, there is there is some blue bounce. That's why on the I, I always get control trouble with my yeah, direction on this. the left. Yeah, that's on the bottom, but on the side of his head, it's very subtle. Um, but there yeah. is some. I saw and, that addition. Yes. Yeah. But like then down here, you know, the part of his neck that's that's getting shadowed by his giant head, it feels equally warm to everything out here. Like I would expect this to be a little bit cooler than it is, mm -hmm. you know? And like, even in here, this, and I see a little bit of it in there, but but overall, and part of it is because I think it's just, it's too bright. Mm -hmm. And and his skin is, I don't know if it's, his, maybe his skin is very neutral and the light is very, very yellow, um, but he, he feels, you know, uh, yeah, kind of yellowish, like like Gus's shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, look at this guy. He's got he's got red tones where you know you feel the blood coming through. Um, this stuff actually is a little yellow, if you ask me. But you know, look at Michael Douglas's complexion and Gus's complexion versus 
this sort of blanched and yellow. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Sure thing. Okay. Um, well, that, that's it for today. Then we covered everybody. So thanks for coming. And uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Thursday's going to be my last day. So if you guys have stuff that you want to run by me, um, try to get it up for then. All right. Thanks a lot. See ya. Bye. Bye.